So what do you uh, expect from Milwaukee? I know some things have changed there. And right. What, what well, lots have changed there. Their roster's turned upside down. They have a new coach. I have a couple guys that are back from last year. But, you know, a lot of athleticism, um, a lot of guys that are very versatile that can attack you off the bounce. Uh, I think it's going to be important for us to be able to, you know, handle their pressure. Uh, he's been a very successful coach, you know, at all of his stops. Uh, they've been very good defensively, very good pressure man-to-man -man defensively. Um, so I think that's going to be kind of first and foremost, being able to handle their pressure. They'll get up and press you. They'll mix it up a little bit. It, it, it's hard because you don't have yeah. anything besides you know last year to really go off of in these early games. It seems like you put in. Did you put more emphasis this preseason on handling pressure than you have in the past? Not really. No, no I, I spent it time that way to me. Spent time from a from a pressing standpoint, but in terms of overall pressure, that's overall pressure is what knocks you out of anything anyway. So you spend a lot of time on that no matter what. Okay, have you spent more time on press? Pressure. I was conflating those two things. Yep. They're cousins, but they're not the same thing. <laughs> Subspecies. Um, there you go. There you go. Good. Um, yeah, so we, we've just tried to, whether it's a, a zone press, man to man press, run and jump, just to kind of have a heavy dose. If you look at our schedule and some of the people coming, and obviously Milwaukee also, um, and they do a lot of pressing, so we want be prepared, but really, it's no different than any other year. You just got to look at your schedule, and then once you get to people, you got to work on it. No one's going to press you for four or five games. You're just not going to sit there and work on it. But um, there's always the, you know, the surprise, and people do things differently than they normally do. But for the most part, you know, they do what they've done. What was the trade dynamic work for you guys? I think Trey and any of the other three guys will work for our guys, or Caleb and any of the other three. You know, so, so is there I, something about those two that you well, feel like it's really going to work together well? Well, sure, they're both good players. I think more than anything, they, you know, kind of have the same size. So, like, how people match up to them, I think, will be an interesting look to see who they put on Trey versus who they put on Caleb. But, um, yeah, both of them are, you know, I think tough matchups. And uh, together, I think they cause, you know, even a tougher look. But... They've, they've all played well together. They've all mixed in well together, no matter what the matchup is. You know, last year you, were, you always pointed out what Zach and Trey did at the center position. This is what you got out of the center position for 40 minutes. Right. Do you look at that front court kind of the same way with those four guys? Is this the production we're going to get out of these? Yeah, you minutes? know, it just depends on how it unfolds. Like, you know, those guys split time. You know, we'll see if, you know, guys split time. I think you'll see a little bit of that, um, but I, you know, I don't want to handcuff anybody in terms of their development progression or their development progression together, you know, as groups. So that's what we've tried to do is play them, you know, in different matchups, different groups to see who plays well together, and, they, and they've all had a lot of success. As much of a handful as Trey's been one on one around the basket, mm -hmm. does he have to be ready for people to start bringing a double to him, and then he gets killed with threes so. and dives and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I hope they double him. So it's always a good thing when you get guys that are trying to get the ball out of his hands and you have multiple people on the floor that, you know, if he's with Zach or he's with Caleb, you know, um, you know, we haven't went small a lot with really with Trey and Mason as much, but they, they'd be great together, even though we, they practice some together. Um, but yeah, that's, I think anytime somebody is doubling you, they're doubling you for what they've seen, they double them because of production. So you got to do something first. They just don't just come out of the shoot and say, "Hey, we're going to double you," unless that's what you do. That's what we do. So like we double everybody um, if they're on the block. I thought Waddell looked really good against Truman. Where is he right now in terms of his ability to be a rotational guy for you to help you? I know you yeah. said the injuries have always kind of sidetracked him a bit. But. Well, no, they've sidetracked him yeah. not a bit. They've sidetracked him anytime you miss that much time. You know, it's hard. Um, coming back, and then while he's coming back, he sprains his ankle. So it was just, you know, uh, you know, some bad luck there. But you know, he he looked good in the. He made a couple moves in the scrimmage that we haven't seen in practice, and so that was good. That, the way he moved and made the one pass, that was a lot of the um, the movement he was getting before he got injured last year, where he looked really good and fluid. So, just you know, trying to get, you know, him, you know, on the practice floor and, and staying there, and then you know, getting in the game. And, Positive experiences, you know, he can't. 
He's got to build that confidence and feel good about it. That church this year? Uh, we're still working right now. It's just Will. So we'll get to you when we have a decision on anybody else. Uh, obviously, in that, that starting five, the, the offense is going to run through Zach. It's going to run through your post. But mm -hmm. um, especially early on in the season, do you want to see a little more aggressiveness out of you know, your backcourt players, guys like Ethan and, and Braden and Fletcher? Just wanted to make good decisions. You know, not really, you know, being aggressive, just uh, kind of taking what the defense gives them. And uh, when it's there, you know, look for your shot. When you have angles, look to be aggressive and drive. Um, but be under control. You know, for us, just if, if we can make good decisions, um, you know, we're, we're going to be okay. I think a lot of things get talked in theory when each play's a little bit different or each set's a little bit different. And you just got to make the reads and, and take what yeah. the defense gives you. And after looking back at the, the Truman State exhibition, do you think they, they did that for the most part? To, to yeah. What you expected? Yeah, of? we only had four turnovers as a team. So um, obviously, yeah. Truman, their thing that, that held us up a little bit was they, they, they moved the way they moved to start the game. I think it, it took us a while to, to really adjust to that. Like their movement was really good, where like Cincinnati's athleticism is really good. And so, like, we haven't faced that kind of athleticism in practice. But the, the Truman State's, you know, movement right away, that's why they were up on us to start the game. Like, there was an adjustment there. And so once we kind of adjusted to that, kept taking care of the basketball. We didn't shoot the ball tremendously well. We could have scored a lot more points. But um, anytime you play those games, it's always, you know, you, you think it's more than one thing. You hope it's more than one thing. But, you know, I thought that was the – the best piece for us that we played somebody that cut so hard like Truman State. Do you anticipate, um, like when you're substituting, yeah. you know, do, you, do you want that second group like together for extended minutes, minutes um, or is it, you know, I know it's going to be dictated yeah. by game conditions and foul and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I think when you get that ultimate second group, that means nobody in the first group is in there. And I don't know if that'll always be the case. It depends on kind of a rotation. I've done that because I was trying to play 11 people. Right. And if I would have done it a regular way, I, I, I'd have messed up the minutes. So I was just trying to give guys minutes. So that's I wouldn't read into that. But that would, but will that change in the regular season? How you yes. would approach that now? Yeah, I won't play 11 people. <laughs> 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 so I've always tried to play 10, and, and by the end of the year, I, I, I don't. I play nine. And sometimes I try to play nine in so, so I have a friend of mine that always says, play seven, but trust six. <laughs> I'm not quite there, but it is what it is. It, it lends to people who don't understand basketball or don't understand coaching is it's not as much as people's physical talents because everybody has physical ability and they wouldn't be here. It, the trust factor is a big deal. Like, like, who are you at the end of a game? Like, can you be trust? Not, are you really good and really talented? Like, can you draw up something in the huddle and you're going to follow it? Can you get a defensive assignment or, or switch a defensive assignment and then be able to make that change? Like, that trust is really, really important. So I know we're kind of just.